our revolution. Okay. So, sabi natin kasi two years after the sign of proclamation 2045, the end of Marshall and August, uh, 20, uh, 21, 1983, an incident shocked the whole country. Senator Benigno Aquino Jr. was assassinated at the Manila International Airport, now Naiya. And the death of Ninoy was linked to his political enemies. That time, that made the presidency of President Marcos to start being unstable. So because of the incident, actually, people started to challenge ag ag again uh, Ferdinand Marcos uh, credibility as president. Surprisingly, after being dared by an American journalist, President Marcos took the challenge and called for that what we call a snap election. Just to prove to the opposition that he can still win the support and trust of the Filipino people. And the campaign period started from December 19, 1985 to February 5, 1986. And then snap election called by Marcos was held on February 7, 1986. The two main candidates were President E. Marcos under the Kilusan ng Bagong Lipunan or KBL Party and Corazon C. Aquino for the PDP, PDP Laban Party. The two main candidates, Ferdinand E. Marcos and Corazon Aquino, representing the KBL Party and the PDP Laban respectively, both won the election due to the different counting by Namprel and the Comele. Okay? Uh, Marcos... Uh, President Marcos won in the Comelec official count, while Corazon, according naman dun sa Namprel count, no? Nanalo naman si Corazon Aquino, okay? Due to the confusing results, opposition contested, uh, contested the vote counting of Comelec, and they started to mobilize the United States of America and the Church gave a statement supporting Aquino's succession as president. This event is known to be the promoter of the end of Marx's regime and as it uh, brought about the People Power Revolution. Okay. On February 2, 22, 1986, Defense Minister Juan Ponce and Reading General Fidel Ramos, the chief of the Philippine Constabulary, defected from the Marcos uh, government and Reading and Ramos uh, barricaded themselves in the Defense Ministry headquarters in Manila along uh, with a small group of symp uh, sympathetic troops. They said they were uh, prepared to die rather than to continue supporting the corrupt Marcos regime. So they joined the group of Corazon Aquino and Salvador Laurel. So they also called the EDSA Revolution as the Yellow Revolution due to the presence of yellow ribbons during the de demonstration then later led to the departure of President Marcos going to the island of Hawaii. So um, that's the end of the Marcos regime. So the start of, Cor uh, the start of Corazon Aquino's administration, when President Marcos was already in exile, the new president passed track, the restoration of full constitutional government, and the writing of the new charter to replace the 1970 constitution of President Marcos. So President Corazon Aquino appointed 48 members of the 1986 Constitutional Commission, or CONCOM, led by retired activist Supreme Court Associate Justice Cecilia Munoz Palma. So the final draft of the constitution uh, was completed on October 1986. On February uh, 2, 1987, the new constitution of the Philippines put strong emphasis on civil liberties, human rights, and social justice was overwhelmingly approved by the Filipino people. And the ratification of the new constitution was followed by the election of senators and congress that same year and holding the local election in 1988 and of course since our constitution is uh um focused on our rights no when so so sabi natin no the step election called by marcos was held on february 7 yeah katulad niya sabi ng panina was held on february 7 uh 1986, no? And the two main candidates were Marcos and Corazon Aquino. So, due to, sabi nga natin, um, si Enrile at saka si Ramos ay bumaligtag na kay Marcos, katulad ng pinanggit ko kanina. 
and they called for the they called the it's a revolution the yellow revolution to the president of yellow ribbon that time okay so let's proceed to the uh corson aquino administration nga nabanggit ko na kanina no na yun nga eh, i-focus the constitution dun sa tinatawag nating mga more uh, liberties and human rights no and the promises of uh during the election and inauguration of aquino or corson aquino are erosion of our sense of nation uh, to create jobs and livelihood deliver social services bring about peace and order, improve the lives of all our people, mobilize the spirit of volunteers, especially among the youth by documenting the and publicizing examples of self-service to country and people by people and individuals working in and with the last roots. No? So, the law programs under President Aquino were restoration of democracy, no? But then, no, sa sa exam, he, the first thing he she made to restore the democracy of the Philippines. Ang unang niya ginawa, he, she abolished the legislature and declared a revolutionary form of government. Tandaan natin yun na yun yung ginawa ni President Corazon Aquino to restore the uh, democracy in the Philippines. He wrote the, wrote the new constitution of 1987, Constitution, the Land Reform, Pre-Secondary School, and Proxy Nation Number 1, calling the appointed public official to submit their courtesy resignations. In her, no, kasi nga sabi niya, um, lahat ng officials during the time of crisis, pinaano niya muna, to re-establish niya the government. Pinaresign niya muna para lahat ay bago, no? So we have proclamation number one, no executive order number one, appointing cabinet ministers and task to for, for task forces to help her run the government, no. We have proclamation number three, uh, proclaiming her government a revolutionary form of government. With with this, she suspended the 1973 constitution installed during the martial law and promulgated a provisional freedom constitution which vested legislative making powers on her pending the enactment of the new constitution. We have the presidential decree number, proclamation number nine, that provided for the creation of constitutional commission or CONCOM to draft the new charter or truly reflected the idea of aspiration of the Filipino people. So we have executive number 48, creating the ad hoc special committee to supervise the liquidation of the affairs and constitutional commission of 1986. Preparation of its records and uh, under, to undertake its constitutional education campaign. United States hand a trading on the First Republic Fund Incorporation. No ratification of the 1991 treaty. No, a president must also learn how to bow to the inevitable as Corey had to do with the negotiations on the renewal of the U.S. lease on its military bases in the Philippines after keeping her option of when she uh, signaled her support for the ratification of the 1991 treaty allowing the American continued access to the installation for 10 years with the option of to renew for another 10. The Senate voted 12-11 against the agreement and Americans were out of the country by 1992. So Administrative Code 1987 so establish the various cabinet department and offices falling within the executive branch of government under the direct control and supervision of the president. So we have executive order number 229. No, it is uh, provided with uh, 229. 229. Implementation of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program for CAR. We have proclamation number 131, uh, instituted the CAR as the major program of, of the government, where it provided for the special fund for the Sakari Reform Fund or ARF with an initial amount of 50 million pesos to cover the estimated cost of the program from 1987 to 1992. We have Executive Order Number One Two Nine, 
I uh, streamlined and expanded the power operations of the guard, the Republic Act number 6657, or the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law, Executive Order number 405, vested in the land of the Philippine the responsibility to determine land population and compensation for all lands recovered by car. We have executive number 407, acceleration and acquisition distribution of agricultural lands, pasture lands, fish lands, agroforestry lands, and other lands of the public domain suitable for agriculture. Executive order 22A. Uh, the claim full ownership to qualified farmers, beneficiaries covered by PD number, percent decree number 27. It also determined the value remaining unvalued rice and corn land subject to uh, and provided for the manner of payment, the mode of compensation to landowners. So, during the presidency of President Corazon Aquino, um, Series of natural disasters hit the country in 1998. and series of typhoons. The administration was flagged by uh, by flagged by uh, what is it? The coup d'état. Okay. Actually, why? Ano? Uh, Inaawos yung ano? Parang uh, the strong lady of Asia or the iron lady of Asia. Si June that time na si Korsaki. Because ano siya? She pays for several, ano talaga, several coup d'etat during her time as president, no? Yung nagtatago pa siya sa ilalim ng 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 namin niya sa Malacanang, no? Sobra. Siya yung, sa lahat ang naging presidente, siya yung naging ano, kasi nga nagkakaroon pa tayo during the time na reformation of the government. So, so, ano pa, ah, during, the, during her time also, the foreign investors started to pull out their investment from the country because of the fear. Because nga na sa mga kudita na nangyayari sa kanya, she became the president of the country because of the Filipino people belief. She was the positive change they needed after Marcos. And during his, her time, they wrote down the Eastern Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines, where in the Constitution of the Philippines, we have seven articles again. Um, no, of course, the regulation between state policies and it had the content of the 1970 Constitution. So, Bill of Rights, right to due process, right against searches, right to privacy. Right to freedom of speech, no? Right to free exercise of religion, right na ano, etc. Sabi natin, um, Corazon Aquino was born on January 25, 1933 in Paniki, Tarlac. He was married to, or she was married to uh, Senator Benigno Aquino Jr. and the 11th President. She was the first woman president of the Republic of the Philippines. No? By that 20, uh, he was diagnosed by cultural uh, uh, or Colo cancer or colorectal cancer, no, and she was like on um, uh, at on twenty o nine, August on twenty o nine, no, at the age of seventy six years old. Okay, so actually, Corazon Aquino finish is she her ano pala finish her um. term as president of the Philippines, no? Even though she faced the administration, um, the next president, no, during the time, or to hold the, uh, the position of the government is an Aran Ferdinand uh, Fidel V. Ramos, no? Who is Ferdinand Ramos? Okay. Fidel B. Ramos was the 12th president of the Philippines. He was born on March 18, 1928 in Lingayen, Pangasinan. His mother, Angela Valdez, uh, 
was a member of respectable desk clan of Batak, Ilocos Norte, making him the second dignitary cousin of former Philippine President Ferdinand E. Marcos. He was married to Amelita Martinez and they have five daughters. No? Fidel B. Ramos went to Philippine Military Academy later to enter the United States Military Academy at West Point where he graduated in 1950. He was a general and became chief of the Philippine Constabulary during Marcos' time. He broke out with, away with Juan Ponce and Lili and blasted the Elsa Revolution to oust the former strongman Ferdinand Marcos. Ramos was the founder of the Philippine Army Special Forces and then he was named to the commander of the Army's 3rd Division base in City Cebu. Before he became president, he was the AFP Chief of Staff and later the Secretary of National Defense of the former President, Corazon Aquino. So actually, during the administration of Marcos, um, Marcos uh, embarked on the ambitious development of plan that, no, the Philippines 2000. So during uh, my elementary days, no, yan ang laging pinasasaulo sa amin na, ano, na, na mabuhay. No, mabuhay. Philippines 2000. Yan. Yan yung, yung, ano yan? Yung laging pinasasaulo sa amin mga picture namin. Okay? So, because that is the idea that the uh, in the year 2000, the Philippines is in the state of being uh, progressive and stable country. No? So, under the plan, several industries critical to economic development was privatized, such as electricity, telecommunications, banking, domestic shipping, and oil. So, the taxation system was reformed also. The external debt was brought to more manageable levels by debt restructuring and sensible fiscal management. He was also known as the most troubled Philippine president compared to his uh, uh, predecessors with numerous foreign trips under his administration. The Philippines enjoyed economic growth and stability. His vision of Philippines 2000 led the country to uh, into a newly industrialized country in the world and became the part of the what we call tiger club no economy economy in asia because before no i don't know so the five point the philippine 2005 programs of uh fidel ramos administration is about peace and state stability no economic growth and sustainable development energy and power generation environmental protection and streamline So during his administration, from 1992 to 1998, he defined the four core priorities of the foreign party policy, namely the enhancement of national security, promotion of economic diplomacy, the protection of overseas Filipino workers, and of course the Filipino national abroad, and projection of the good image of the country abroad. So the major legislation signed by President Marcos is about the new Central Bank Act, the Republic Act 7638, the Charter of Department of Energy, the RA number 7648, Republic Power Crisis Act, RA 7832, Anti-Electricity and Electric Transmission Lines Materials, uh, Pilperage Act of 1994, uh, uh, RA 7881, the amendment of certain provisions of RA 6657, and the exempted fish funds and prawns from the coverage of CARP, Republic Act 7905, strengthened the implementation of the CARP, Republic RE number 8179, the Act of Parties re, uh, re liberalizing foreign investment, no? uh, RE number 8293, the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines, or the Copyright Law of the Philippines, we have Republic RE 8435, the Agriculture and Fisheries Modern. Modernization Act or AFMA. Uh, it flagged the uh, legal uh, loopholes in land use conversion. Uh, RE number 8532, the Agrarian Reform Fund Bill, provided an additional 50 million to for CARP and extended its implementation for another 10 years. Execution order number 363. 
limits the type of lands, may um, limits the type of land, no? That may be converted by setting conditions under which limits the type of lands that may be converted by setting a uh, condition under which specific categories of agricultural land are either absolutely non-negotiable for conversions or highly restricted for conversion. So the Migrants Worker versus Filipino Worker Act of 1985 provided a framework for strong protection for Filipino workers abroad with the creation of the Legal Assistance Fund and the Assistance to National Funds. The designation in the DFT and the Legal Assistance to Migrant Workers Affairs or uh, and with the rank of Undersecretary and Foreign Affairs. So in early 1995, actually, um, the Philippines discovered the primitive Chinese military structure of uh, Mischief Reef in this Prati Island, 130 nautical miles of the coast of Palawan. The Philippine government issued a formal protest over China's occupation of the reef, and the Philippine Navy arrested 62 uh, Chinese fishermen at Half Moon Shoal, 80 kilometers from Palawan. The week, a week later, following confirmation from surveillance pictures that the structure were of uh, military design, President Fidel Ramos had the military forces to in the region strengthen. He ordered the Philippine Air Force to dispatch five F-5 fighters backed by four jet trainers and two helicopters while the Navy sent two additional ships. So the People's Republic of China had claimed that uh, the structures were shelters for fishermen, but this small incident could have triggered the war in the South China Sea. So one of the... Um, one of the recession of his administration was his experience in handling the uh, migrant workers' protection on March 17, 1993. Ramos was on foreign trips when floor contemplation was hung in Singapore. His last-minute effort to negotiate with Singapore President Ong Teng Chong and Prime Minister Go Chok Tong never succeeded. He was marked with protests after his return to Manila. The protests also caused the resignation of Foreign Affairs Secretary Roberto Romulo and Labor Secretary Nieves Confessor from the cabinet. He immediately recalled Philippine Ambassador to Singapore, Alicia Ramos, and suspended diplomatic relations to Singapore. During that presidency the, uh, of Fidel Ramos, the Philippines became also the member of the World Trade Organization, which is an organization that intend to supervise and liberalize international trade. So what are the controversies during the Ramos administration? Of course, the Club Centennial Expo scandal. Okay, it's about the Centennial Expo and a theater at the former Clark Air Base in Angeles City, Pampanga. Supposedly, it was Ramos' pet project. The commemorative projects, particularly those undertaken at Clark, were counted by illegal and electioneering, the corruption of the overseas, even years after the centennial celebration. The Ramos was accused of corruption in the PEA, a married deal, the controversial actually uh, deal involved the acquisition of 150 hectares of reclaimed land on the mass element plan, MVM. The role of Ed Satu, ouster of President uh, Ramo of Estrada, no? the long standing criticism of La Estrada is misalled by his fear of being prosecuted in connection with the Centennial Expo and other scams. Unsound economic policies, no? owned land, na, and government owned. Um, um, tag dito yung mga corporations na ibinenta natin to private to sa private na kinunbert sa private no actually yung Meralco pinal siya nag privatize niya dahil dat kasi government na naghahawak yun okay so we can expose no and the midterm election on May 1995 Okay. The idol of masses. Kung meron tayong champion of the masses, may idol of the masses tayo. That is none other than um, 
Joseph Ejercito Estrada. Okay. Joseph Ejercito Estrada actually uh, um, directing president of the Philippines Republic. No, he was uh, from 1998 to 2000, but, then, but unfortunately, uh, um, Joseph Estrada is married former first lady during Senator Dr. Luisa Loy Pimentel, whom he met while she was working at the National Center of Mental Health in Mandaluyong. So, yung kanyang mga anak ay sila Cho Jose Jingo Ejercito, the former mayor of San Juan City, and Joseph Victor Ejercito. Okay. So, what are the uh, projects or um, contribution of Joseph Estrada in, during his term? Okay. The centennial president, kung tawagin natin itong si Joseph Estrada because he was elected during the 1998. Year of 1998 is the year of the 100 year of Philippine independence. Kaya tinawag siya the centennial president. He was, uh, Estrada uh, was elected in 1998 with the right uh, uh, margin of votes separating him from the other challengers and was sworn into president in June 30, 1998. In 2000, he declared an all out war against the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF and captured its headquarters and other camps. Estrada encountered politics in 1967, entered the politics in 1967, running for mayor in San Juan, Nero Manila, then a municipality of Rizal, failing and only succeeding in 1969 after winning an electoral protest against Crucio Santo Domingo. When Corazon Aquino assumed the presidency in 1986, also elected officials and all local government were forcibly removed and replaced by appointed officer in charge, including Estrada. Estrada won a seat in the Senate under the Grand Alliance for Democracy or GAT, placing 16 in the election. Uh, in 1987, he set his sight on the uh, on a senator and handily garnered a seat. He was appointed chairman of the Committee on Public Works. He was vice chairman of the Committees on Health, uh, Natural Resources and Ecology and Urban Planning. So in the Senate, Estrada was uh, credited uh, with the passage of among other major uh, pieces of legislation the bills on irrigation, projects and project protection and propagation of carabouts and the list of burden in natural, in rural areas. As a senator, he was one of the so-called magnificent 12, no, who voted to terminate the uh, RPUS military basis agreement leading to the withdrawal of American servicemen from Clark Air, Air Base in Pampanga and Subic Naval Base in Zambales. So in 1992, Joseph Estrada initially ran for president with Vicente Rivera eh, as his running mate, but he withdrew his bid and instead ran for vice president as the running mate of Eduardo Coanco under the National People's uh, Coalition. Though Coanco lost the former National Defense Secretary Fidel Ramos, Estrada won the vice presidency, garnering more votes than his closest opponent, Ramon Mitra Jr. and running mate Marcelo Fernandez. As Vice President Estrada was the chairman of President, Mar President Ramos Presidential anti crime Commission or PACC, Estrada arrested criminal warlords and kidnapping syndicates. He resigned as chairman in 1997. And one of the laws created during the, the time is the what we call the Carab Carabao Law, Republic Act 7307. It was a set up in 1992 and 19, uh, uh, on a 40 hectares piece of land donated by Central Luzon State University on its main campus. Initially with the network centers, seven more uh, network centers were added in 1994, being a total of 13 uh, hectares. It was uh, sponsored as a bill by the then Senator Joseph Strata and eventually enacted um, as a law through Republic Act 7307 or the Philippine Carabao Act of 1992. Part of their mandate was to breed and cross carabao based on high-yield mora buffalo 
or native breed of, Har of Haryana state of India in the Philippines as a multi-purpose animal that can be raised uh, for milk, meat, and farming work animal. So as we have a medium and large scale integrated uh, integrated enterprise that can uh, access long-term capital. So during the as, as administration, um, we highlighted the MILF within the framework of the Constitution because the peace agreement upon us would be impreparable uh, to a peace enforcement force and the moral national liberation board or MNLF because uh, that is our commitment of our countrymen to the international community to have this. So there are some controversies during the era of administration. The corruption charges no, that led to, to his impeachment no where in uh, Ilocos Sur, Senate, uh, Governor Luis Chavez Simpson, a uh, close friend of Estrada, alleged that he had personally given Estrada 40 million pesos, 400 million pesos as pay off from weapon. So House Speaker Manny Villar passed off the impeachment complaint, no? And of course, he was impeached, no? And he, and the karong patente na tag natin EDSA 2. So during this EDSA 2, no? They, uh, they hosted uh, Joseph Estrada and on January 16, 2001, uh, the impeachment court voted not to open an envelope and was alleged to contain incriminating evidence against the president simply because it was not part of the impeachment complaint. That night, not Uh, for not opening the set and below anti strada protesters gathered from the Edsa Shrine at Epipanya to Sanz Abner Edsa. In January 2000, I'm forced to stop chief of staff, Angel Reyes, seeing the political confusion throughout the country. He decided to withdraw his support to uh, President uh, Estrada and he supported uh, Gloria Macapaga. Uh, so that's the reason why after President Estrada walked out the Malanyang, uh, in the Malacanang, the Supreme Court following that they declare declared the vacancy of the presidency before Estrada's part uh, of the uh, he, he, Of course, the vice president turns uh, into president. That is the uh, the daughter of just Dado Macabal, none other than Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, the first newly elected vice president of the Philippines started to, to become president when the uh, when former president Joseph Estrada was ousted in the Malacanang. So Gloria Macapag, uh, her initial administration did not go smoothly. Actually, President Estrada's lawyers questioned the legitimacy of Arroyo's presidency before the Supreme Court. He reiterated that he had not resigned as president and that at most Arroyo was just serving in an acting capacity. The High Court, however, voted and anonymously um, uphold the legitimacy of Arroyo's succession. So on July um, 23, 2003, the Oakwood mutiny happened. A group of 321 armed soldiers who called themselves Magdalo, led by Army Captain Gerardo Gambala and Lieutenant Antonio Trillanes, the port of the Philippine Navy, took over the Oakwood Premier Ayala Center service apartment tower in Makati City to show the Filipino people the alleged corruption of the Gloria Macapagal Arroyo administration. They also stated that they saw signs suggesting that the president was going to declare martial law and later in 2011. After the attempt of the ousting her from presidency, Arroyo was charged with electoral fraud and corruption. And before the 2004 presidential election, the controversy once again arose when Gloria Arroyo announced that after her term of succession, she would initially announce on December 30, 2002 that she would not seek the presidency in 2004. She actually, she emphasized pa nga that she would devote her remaining months in office in serving people and improving the economy in the Philippines. But in 2003, for, an ever, uh, for whatever reason, Gloria Arroyo, uh, previous pronouncement, no? 
for not running in the election. And she complained that there is a higher cost to change society in a way that nourishes our future. With her decision, the initial criticism hurled against Arroyo uh, centered on her lack of word of honor and Gloria Macapag Arroyo filed a re-election against her tight rival, the actor turned political Fernando Poe Jr. And the turn of the said 2000 election became controversial because of the what we call Hello Garcia tape or Hello Garcia scandal. Okay? Because Arroyo, according to Arroyo, wo, uh, to commission election, Arroyo won by the margin of over 1 million votes against Poe. However, the congressional canvassing was quite con contentious as opposition lawmakers in the National Board of Canvassers argued that there were many discrepancies in the election returns and those insinu insinuation of cheating were erased. On June 23, 2004, Congress, the Congress proclaimed Arroyo and Dolly de Castro as president and vice president, respectively. The Comelec proclaimed Lord Arroyo as the winner of the presidential election over Fernando Poe Jr. on June 13, 2004. In a break from tradition, Arroyo first delivered her inaugural speech at the Quirino Grandstand in Manila. She then departed for Cebu City for her oath taking, the first time that the Philippine president took the oath of office outside of Luzon. So after a year of rumor sur uh, surpassed uh, when the former deputy director Samuel Ong of the National Bureau investigation why the controversial conversation between Arroyo and an official in the Commission on Election Comic where Emilio Garciliano, the voices is in the recording were identified as the voice of Garciliano talking to Arroyo. According to Ong, the recording allegedly proved that Arroyo ordered the support of national election for her win by around 1 million votes against Poe. The recordings of Ong became famous in the Philippines known as the Hello Garcia scandal and triggered massive protests against Gloria Arroyo. Some key members of her cabinet resigned from their respective posts and urged Arroyo to do the same. So on June 27, 2005, to the televised message, Arroyo admitted to an inappropriately speaking to a communic official, thinking it was a lapse of in judgment. She, however, uh, denied influencing the outcome of the election and declared that she won the election fairly. Arroyo did not resign despite the pressures coming from various sectors of society. So, um, on February 24, uh, 2006, a plot of poverty, the government was uncovered by authorities, alleged. Uh, Allegedly, headed by General Danilo Lim and other rightist military adventurers, uh, General Lim and some of his men were arrested to face the threat posed uh, by enemies of the state, Arroyo, issue for the presidential proclamation 1017, and issue and use it as a means of declaring the state of emergency throughout the Philippines. Aside from General Lim, prominent personalities were also arrested in the connection with the uh, alleged participation in the attempt of the overthrow the government. Uh, among these arrested were uh, Colonel Terubin, Randy Nabil, Deltran, Batas, and uh, known as the Batasan Pai. The party's representative charged with rebellion were placed under the custody of the House of Representatives, the Bayan Muna Party, with Teodoro Casino, Sator Ocampo, and Joel Virador. Gabriel Di Samasa and Anak Pawis of the Sympathy Rafael Mariano. After her term, she was confined at the Saint, she was confined at St. Luke Medical Center. Arroyo was arrested on November 18, 2011, after the Pasay Court issued warrant of arrest against her following the, the filing of a complaint for electoral sabotage by the Commission on Election. The arrest warrant was served at St. Luke's Medical Center at the gate where Arroyo had been confined. On July, um, on July uh, 19, 2016, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the dismissal of Lander case against Arroyo, guarding of vote 11 4, which was read by spokesperson Theodore T7 of, of the 11 judges who voted the uh, acquittal were appointed by Arroyo, and three of the four justices who voted against Arroyo's acquittal were appointed for. A former President Pinigno Aquino III, including Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. 
So after her term as president, she ran and became representative of the second district of Pampanga. And until now, she she was the congressman in Pampanga. Okay, a congresswoman in Pampanga. So here are some of the results of this program for land reforms. We have the land tenure uh, land tenure improvement. It means a uh, by by groups implementing land acquisition and distribution component of comprehensive agrarian uh, agrarian program so provision of support services the cap is not only involved in the distribution of land but also included the packet and support services which include credit assistance uh, extension services irrigation facilities roads and bridges infrastructure uh, infrastructure uh, projects no the part the dar will transform the agrarian reform com communities and um, area focus on the integrated delivery of support services into rural and um, zones. The Kalahi Agrarian Reform or the these zones consists of one or more municipal concentration of ERC population to achieve greater agro productivity, agrarian justice to help clear and backlog of agrarian cases and the other controversies um, of Makabal administration is a fertilizer uh, pan scam involving accusation of grant. Ito yung very uh, naging popular way back 2004. No? Siguro bata pa kayo nito involving accusation of agriculture under Secretary Josephine Volante, Volante uh, diverted to 728 million to fertilizer pan to the 2004 election campaign of President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. The National Broadband Network scandal or the CTE scandal niya, the allegation of corruption under Gloria Arroyo administration when the Department of Transportation Communication and DOT, DOTC um, contract for National Broadband Network, no controversial dinner party and on DOI, no when New York dined with her friends and the Philippine delegation during her visit in America, the set dinner cost 20,000 US dollars, equivalent to almost 1 million pesos, as reported in the New York Post. No, Another was the negligence of Arroyo administration in the Typhoon on Doi that cost the 440 people, the North Rail controversy, the North Rail project, the 500 US million dollar. Uh, project was another controversy of corruption under the administration. She sent a memorandum of limit with Sinomac to construct the rail line from Kolaokan to Kolaik Special Economic Zone once to be completed in 2010, but until now, in the of no? So, let's proceed to Noinoy or Noinoy Phenomenon. Okay. Actually, sabi natin, Noinoy Phenomenon, Phenomenon. Former, uh, former Senator Bates, Senator Benigno is Aquino III, didn't have plan to run for the uh, presidency that time. In fact, on November 26, 2008, the Liberal Party, party, also the political party affiliation of Aquino, already elected Maro as president of the Liberal Party. As the standard bearer of the Liberal Party for president of the Philippines in the te then and 2010 presidential elections. But Everything changed when former President Corazon Aquino died of colon cancer. The supporters of former President uh, gathered the spirit of its revolution once again revived that what they called as Cory fever. So after the burial of former President Cory, many people started to shout out Noy Noy for president until it consolidated larger number of people's support for his candidacy and became known as Noy Noy Phenomenon. Marojas don't have the choice but to decline his nomination for presidency and give way to Noinoy Aquino and Mar Adbe to run as Noinoy running me for the vice president. So to formalize their support, the Noinoy Aquino, uh, they, they formed the Noinoy Aquino for president movement and conducted signature campaign as support for Noinoy candidacy. On June 30, 2010, um, Benigno Simeon Aquino III became the 15th president of the Philippines. And some of the priorities programs of President Ninoy Aquino, I think very uh, nag, nag became popular siya dito sa no wong wong policy. So admi under administration of the Aquino, he created the no wong wong policy. The term wong wong is a street language for blaring, blaring sir sirens. 
So, the purpose of this policy was to eliminate those abusive persons in using their sirens for their personal interests. So, the Presidential Decree Number 9 is issued by former President Marcos, regulated the use of sirens, bells, whistles, horns, and other similar devices only for to motor vehicles designated as necessary and intended for officials, our President, Vice President, Senate, President, House Speaker, Chief Justice, Philippine National Police, Armed Forces, National Bureau of Investigation, LTO, uh, Bureau of Fire and Ambulance. No? What else? The formation, tinanggal yan, inalis yan ni President Noy Noy Aquino. Okay. So the formation of Truth Commission, he appointed in relation to controversies and allegations of corruption during the administration. Actually, President Aquino formed the Truth Commission that would focus on investigating Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Actually, he appointed the former Chief Justice Hilario Davide to head the said Truth Commission, but somebody questioned the legality of this commission at the Supreme Court. It turned out that the decision was unconstitutional because it violates the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution. So we have the executive orders uh, signed the 30 executive orders uh, it's a genuine early uh, broadcast or original Philippine Municipal Position Radio 25. No, the launch of official presidential website, of course. The location reforms were in um, yung shifting from the Philippines, uh, the shifting of uh, form of education of the Philippines to K to 12 programs. No, from from 12 years to uh, K to 12 kindergarten plus K at uh, 12 years in education program, no. That were used also in United States, Canada, and Australia. Of course, the rep reproductive health bill, also known as the Rep Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act of 2012, the Enhancement of Defense Cooperation Agreement or EDCA. We have the we have the different criticism during the Aquino administration. Dito sila na, ano, na lubog eh, no? yung Manila hostage crisis, no? yung, yung mga, uh, there are, uh, in Quirino Grandstand, there are Hong Kong uh, citizens na, na hostage, no? like Yun Haiyan or Yolanda victims, no? it became uh, also controversies during the uh, administration of Aquino and also the Masasapa no, Mamasapa no, Mamasapa no massacre is also um, uh, parang nakasira during the time of Benigno Aquino administration wherein um, parang sabi nila uh, uh, President Aquino was hounded by accusation of evading responsibilities for the death of 44 Special Action Force operatives in a field operation which led to the so-called Mama Sapano Massacre. Actually, the incident occurred during the police operation with the code name of Oakland or Exodus. So it took place on Sunday on January 10, 2015 no, in Maguindanao by SAF. No? And the operation was intended to capture or kill uh, one, or kill wanted Malaysian terrorist and bomb maker Sul Kifli Abdhir and other Malaysian terrorists and or high-ranking members of the BIFF or the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters. No, but some um, informants said that allegedly it was joined by some personnel of the United States Army Special Forces. So the following, so. Uh, 44 yung namatay dito na part na, na member ng SAP during that time. Okay. So, sabi nga natin, no, nabanggit ko na ito kanina, she, he was the son of former President Corazon Aquino. He was considered as the 15th President of the Philippines. No? And siya yung uh, single na naging presidente ng Pilipinas. So, of course, the next president right after uh, Noy Noy Aquino, I have five minutes pa. 
the changes coming. So this is the political slogan that brought Rodrigo Roa Duterte up to Malacanang as the 16th president of the Philippines and the oldest to assume and hold office of the presidency at the age of 71. His friend called him Rodi or Digong. He was born on March 28, 1945 in Maasin, Southern Leyte. So he was a political science major at the Lacey of the Philippines in 1968 and graduated in law from San Beda College in 1972. Uh, President Digong was the practicing lawyer before he became prosecutor for Davao City. He became vice mayor and subsequently mayor of the city in the week of the Philippine Revolution of 1986. Duterte was among the longest serving mayors in the Philippines, serving seven terms and totaling more than 32 years in office. He also served as representative of the first district in Davao in the 11th Congress in 1998. So, okay. Some events during the President Duterte administration's anti drug campaign. Okay, yan, yung mga natutokhang, no? Names of five police officials who were allegedly involved in illegal drug trade, no? Ito yung tinatag natin, Opland Double Barrel Project Tokhang. Yes, the salary increase of the armed forces of the Philippines and the National Police. Kaya yung iba, mara, gusto na maging uh, police, no? Or maging member ng military. The Declaration of Martial Law in Mindanao because of the Marawi siege, no? When the, uh, on May 23, kasi, uh, 2017, they baptized me under martial law because of the terrorist attack made by the Maote group or Abu Sayyaf or consider natin ISIS group. So the day that of militants orders, Omar Maote, okay, and Duterte declared Marawi liberated from the terrorist influence. But uh, I don't know kung matatapos, uh, kung, kung matatapos na yung yung declaration of martial law. Actually, yung martial law sa Mindanao na experience ko siya ng 2017, tahimik siya. Yung nga lang, maraming checkpoint pag when you go to different parts of Mindanao, for example, from, Dab from Dabao City, you will go to Dabao del Norte, Dabao del Sur, Dabao Oriental, Dabao Occidental, to Compostela Valley, na Dabao de Euro ngayon, to Surigao de del Sur. Ang daming checkpoint. You, you will experience na baba, kahit nasa bus ka, pababapain lahat kayo ng bus, Tapos, iti-checkpoint kayo talaga. Isusulit yung mga pangalan nyo, kailangan may ID ka. Ganun sila kahigpe. Pero that time talaga sa Mindanao, sabi nila nakakatakot kasi Marshall. Pero nung na-experience ko siya sa Mindanao, nakakatakot lang in a way na marami ka kasing militaga makikita. But actually, feeling ko safe. Pero parang okay naman, ang tahimik. So far, nung nakapunta ko doon for two weeks na sa Mindanao ako, ano, okay naman siya. No? I mean, yun nga lang, nakakapagtaka kasi sobrang daming militar. No? So, 